Remember. Remember the names of those who mocked you. Remember those who ridiculed you, who abandoned you, in the face of those who banished you. Of the one who banished you. You have merely forgotten the burning sensation of hate. Once everyone remembers that, the war will begin anew. You won't believe how easy it is. As a genius weaponsmith, Hephaestus needs this better than anyone. Forcefully patching together different pieces weakens the final product. It frays around the edges, and the pieces eventually tear apart. The scenes between one person and another, between cultures, countries, and worlds. This patchwork of all 23 different worlds. This system called Tokyo. Sofra. Okay, so I was right in calling Tokyo a system. If one wants to start a war, all they have to do is aim their weapon at those seams. What is the best weapon? A sword? A bomb? A missile? The answer is none of these. Something that can forcefully and brutally tear the seams of the systems apart. Now that's an excellent weapon. And he is the genius who can build it. Why? Because he's the worst scum of all. He can dig up any flaw, weakness, or defect in opponents. The jealousy slowly burning him up smokes them out. He's always been needed, if for no other reason than to devise and create new weapons. The dirty, rotten guard that he is has no other means to live on. This depressing emptiness molders inside of him all the time. But even within the flames of hatred, one memory stays with him vividly clearly. Vividly clear. Mama. You adopted my disfigured self. You loved a nobody like me. You are the only sanctuary for someone as pathetic as me. But... But... But I then remembered your fate, Mama. If I can justify my actions in protecting you, then I will stop at nothing. Even if it means destroying everything, this Tokyo included. Go ahead and laugh. This weaponsmith is now caught in the crossfire of the war zone Tokyo has become. I didn't even need to instigate it myself, because the war of Tokyo has already gone long since. So it looks like he's planning to sever the world away from Tokyo, and that will lead to Tokyo's disintegration. I don't know. In the Kamata Tech facility in Ota, Ward. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, and cinco! The warriors appeared on the battlefield with unusually delightful smiles and cheerful voices. <laughs> Bravo! The luchadors take the stage with backflips and strike a collaborative pose. Other wrestlers who didn't join in the spectacle further de decorate the scene by cheering. Oh, <laughs> I feel so bad for her <laughs> that she has they have to be exposed to this embarrassing act. <laughs> what is going on? What is that? Some sort of ceremony? <laughs> The tiger staring at the center of the luchador pulls out a mic from somewhere and starts to provoke the confused arc. Arriba, amigos! Challengers! Daring rivals! The, ri the ring awaits our lucha! I'm talking to you! Let's have the best, most exciting fight right here in Tokyo! The other wrestlers start putting up posts, setting up a wrestling ring in the back room. <laughs> a pro wrestler? You wanna fight me? Just who are you? We are a merry band of freewheeling fighters. We go by the name of... Ready, folks? The Warmongers! I see, so they actively seek fights. And... Like, not even, like, a lot of skeletons, but they just literally... Go up to meet random people to fight them. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> they're way too positive. No, they're just getting into my head. Our holds up their chain sacred artifact and stares down the intruders. Warmongers, is it? That's the name of your guild? And you have come here to attack us. I guess you can never be too careful. Who would have thought that anyone would attack the heart of this neutral territory? And what a horrible coincidence that be the day we arrived. No, you've got it all wrong, Rudo! What is that even supposed to mean? The book is already written. We knew that there would be a lucha. Yeah, that had to be our fate. Fate? You knew we'd be coming? Let's not forget, Rudo. We are living the joy of a never-ending lucha. Oh my god. The Therian finishes his speech and lifts up a mysterious... 
mysterious sphere that seems to devour the light in its immediate vicinity, like some kind of black hole. That's... Another face just appears from out of the darkness. He smiles abjectly and begins to speak, tripping over his words. This is Talos, our robot I created. Its form is my ideal body, and within it lie all my memories. And I am the real Hephaestus. Uh, the real Hephaestus, please stand up. I should have picked me too, make me one too. <laughs> Seriously, I need myself an MC. Let's go. This sacred artifact didn't look like this in the beginning. It looked more like a bronze garbage can. I studied a lot of technologies from other worlds I encountered while in Tokyo, and then I finally made this. So far, these are byproducts of my research. Her face this turns on the light and indicates to the attackers from the park. Don't worry, these are just imitations I made. They have nothing to do with those things roaming around and about. Your specs are just about the same, but they don't move on their own. On my order, though, they will protect you from anyone until they break. I mean, it makes sense, so. He's the arms dealer and the weaponsmith. So he made them, and then the, the East decided to use them against uh, Break. Even if those who are targeting the Comet Guild right now come, even if even if those warmongers come down here looking for a fight, Hephaestus raises his voice, hands clenched tightly, shaking. You know those nutcases? It's like you know they're coming. <laughs> no, I was made to remember. Hephaestus squeezes out his words, his giant body shaking as if he is afraid. You didn't know before? Why are you so afraid? Talos, open up. Show it to Mama. Yes, creator. As you wish. With trembling hands, Hephaestus reaches inside Talos' torso. The item that is retrieved is an orb, a sphere that swallows light to create its own eerie glistening. This is what we made, we re made me recall. I remember now. What is that? I've seen that a few times. Why does it look familiar? I just... What? Did I see that in Azathoth's court? Tatatomi and Mori... Oh! Mori talk of those. I only saw that mysterious glow when... Mama, you have seen the memories of previous lips too? Have faces, grimaces in pain. Then it depends on... Look, he asks. Did you see the end where you were murdered by your friends? This is called dark matter. It traps any light, memories, or information inside. It has the same characteristic as the wall, or the app's battle zones. Huh. So there is a physical substance that we can describe uh, the wall or the app's battle zones now. And it's just dark matter. All sacred artifacts are made with this. Huh. The material of the battle zones and wall is the same material of, uh, of sacred artifacts, and they're all the same material too. It's a material that holds in faith and captures light inside. It's very rare, you know. <laughs> I never saw any where I came from. Apparently, the gates, those 23 pillars of light, are made from the same substance. It's all around them too, underground. Huh. Hmm. Gates are made from two. The stuff's under the color of light. What I saw. What? Information overload. Clue. I face this continues to explain almost cheerfully. Of all the sacred artifacts made from dark matter, those that are especially pillars have unique characteristics. The pi pillars pierce through both ether and nether, and are able to hold information within even when time loops back. Hmm. So pillars are associated with world type. Uh, ether and nether, what's the advantage against them? It actually seems that uh, world's <laughs> would not would be weaker against Eastern Nether now I think about it. Huh. Okay, whatever.
This dark matter was once part of a pillar. It's filled with the memories of past loops. Carrying over those memories? Yes, exactly. Hephaestus nods, pleased. And those who can wield pillars can extract memories and give them to others. Hephaestus speaks with the eager pride of a child teacher and seeing a parent something new. So you saw what happened. Ugh. 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 Hephaestus' face is now distorted with pain, and he wretches, struggling not to lose the contents of his stomach. Ugh. My heart. Just a flashback sickens me. They made me... They made me watch. They made me see. Who did? Watch what? Ugh. Ugh. Like a baby throwing a tantrum, Hephaestus shakes his head and swings his arm in the air, sobbing. Get a hold of yourself, creator. Shut up! Don't touch me, Talos! With a sickly pale face, sheened by cold sweat, Hephaestus violently pushes Talos away. I don't know how it happens, or what causes it to end that way. But, but, I remember, just now, it came to me. I face the gazes at you, a distraught expression on his face. I remember the sensation of killing you. Worst of all, it came back to me alongside the memory of the loop in which I lived happily together with you. Memories of past loops of wars. Greater. They made me remember. I wish I had forgotten about it, but since I now remember, I, I must take responsibility. If there is no place to hide in this Tokyo, then uh, I'll put an end to it myself. Talos! Yes, Creator. My wish is your command. With determination ringing in his voice, Hephaestus calls out to Talos. Talos, in turn, answers calmly. Don't worry, Mama. No one will harm you. Not while I'm around. Before anyone lays a hand on you, I will finish it myself. And I'll do it. The only way I know how. Bringing a look of dread, Hephaestus makes his way to an underground exit from the workshop. You appeal to him with a, sh a shout as he clutches his head, standing in front of the doorway and barely breathing. What are you trying to do? Goaded by your query, Hephaestus slings a vicious glare at you. If Tokyo is to be a war zone, then I will escalate this war into the worst ever seen. I'm not good for much, but no one can fan the flames of war like I can. I'll show them all to the bowels of hell. Everyone will die before they can come after mama. That's so messed up. There's gotta be another way. Don't be hasty. No. This is the only way! I can't trust anymore! I can't trust anyone because not one of them has made an effort to avoid killing you in the past, Loops. Not even myself! So, Talos, when everything is over, yes, Creator. You're going to kill me, you got it? Then no one will be left to kill Mama. Talos, you're the best version of me. The one who will never turn on Mama. When everything is over, you can come back here and live happily with Mama. Understand? Yes, Crater, as you wish. What are you saying? Her face, this expression twisted with madness, softens to that of a kind child for just one moment. Don't you worry, Mama, like I told you before. Talos has a safety measure in place. You'll be absolutely safe. There is no way that he could hurt you. This ideal version of me will protect you forever in a world where there are only the two of you. So, uh, so I... I face the gazes upon you, eyes welling up with tears. His manner is still timid, like a child getting caught into mischief. I know that Mama I see in front of me now is just the one I met, and that she doesn't remember me at all. I know it's confusing and troublesome, but... But... Hephaestus covers his face and wails, tears dripping through his fingers and trickling down his skin. 
I remember how we lived happily together. And that's one special Tokyo Mama. So please, Mama, forgive this hopeless fool. Come face me. I won't hold back. Boundless te- oh. Though you succeed in summoning a sword, it appears in less than ideal conditions. Uh, condition. It's like completely broken. The blade is so damaged it can no longer function as any kind of sword at all. My sword. I'm all out of tricks. <laughs> You'll give up then, won't you? <laughs> Troopers, stay here and protect Mama. Acknowledged. The previously idle troops restrain you, distrimed as you are. Her face is then hobbles towards the exit, taking Talos with him. Wait! You try the best you can to get out of the restraints, but they do not yield. Wait! Don't go. I don't want anyone to. Your words fail to reach them. Her face is in Talos disappeared to the exit that leads out of the workshop through an underground passage. Help! Somebody! Anybody! I'll do anything! I'll... Tell Salmon? Master, you... ca... me? Can I... out now? This bursting seam... is okay? Even my shadow out? Huh? Il Salmon? Boundless tail is... What? Something is bursting open. Uh, what is that sound? That seems like a heartbeat. Something is struggling to be born into this world. W what is... What? You can't end like that. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. Looks like we're facing both the face this is. Face this and tell us. <laughs> Eat my dust! <laughs> Where's my fully seated protagonist? My fully seated self. Shibuya Ward. Yo, Yogi. Huh? That's weird. We're scheduled for practice, but I don't see the coach anywhere. Hey, it's time for sumo training. Where did that idiot go? Oh, Ashigaro, uh... Hey, Daisuke, uh... Have you seen Yasuyori? Have you seen Coach Varga? Aha, aha, so that's Yasuyori. Huh? Oh, so you're looking for someone too, Daisuke. You're after Mr. Avarga. I don't know where he is. How does him? The... Yeah, I remember how he sounds. I don't know where he is. You too, Ashira? Are you looking for Yasuyori? Kobungo Inuta? The third year with the scars all over his body. Is there any other Yasuyori? He's been absent from the club for a while, and now he's missing. Ah, right. Come to think of it, I haven't seen him for some time. Is he away for a tournament? I haven't heard anything like that. Daisuke, have you noticed anything unusual about him? The boy in the singlet and the Ursa Ethereum in the loincloth cross their arms in mirrored poses, straining their brains to remember any clues regarding the mystic two men. Mm, ah, that's right. What is it? The last time I saw Yasuyori, he was muttering to himself with a distraught look on his face. What was it? He said, he, "What was it? He remember? He said he remembered something." Huh? I feel like I've heard that somewhere. Hmm. Ah, right. Now I remember Daisuke. Whoa, you scared me! Don't shout at me like that. What is it? Mister Avarga was saying something like that before. He said he remembered and something about a war. A war? I think he used to be in the military back home, but. 
But what's that got to do with anything? Hmm. <laughs> Gotta love the back screen tilt. Hmm, many yaki, many yummy. From this point on, there will be no more bystanders. This momentary peace will be broken. This predetermined war, this never ending conflict, is going to resume. It'll be the beginning of an the end, and the whole of Tokyo will be dragged into it. Yoyogi Academy is no exception. When your beloved friends and neighbors fight each other, what will your decision be? When all of the city remembers the sadness, the hatred of killing each other. That's right, walk on to the world pillar too. At least that's what it seemed like in Fashionista. You, pillar as you are, will remember only the looping joy. Will remember only the looping joy of your occurring lives. So you can only remember happy memories. Isn't that so, Wakon Tonka? Or should I call you one of the 23 other worlds patched into this Tokyo? The pillar that only pierces the light and is not anchored in darkness. The one who descended on this land riding a great a buffalo. The pillar of the world of the great spirits. Wakon Tonka. Those are results. Those results are promising. Nice work, Rocket. You can rest now. Kuragani gently pats the broken test rocket, which stands at the roughly the size of the large plastic bottle. Oh, so the um, the rocket broke. So does that mean uh? Sorry, but these sort of fail? No, not quite, Oz. This was far from a failure. Huh? Failures in rocket engineering are what lead to success. We can learn from those failures and make improvements. Repeat a trial and error pushes technology forward. One step, then the next, and yet another. The only true failure from which you can learn nothing is to cease progressing. That true failure is giving up. Kudogami looks at the cracked rocket, the determination going up in his chest. So, you see, a rocket breaking is not a failure at all, but instead, the beginning of something new. You really are something else, Kurugani. You're so very courageous. The mumbled words Oz speaks are addressed to his own ears rather than to Kurugani's. Hmm? What was that, Oz? Kurugani picks up the pieces of the broken rocket as he questions Oz, who is standing idly behind him. I just... I can't seem to find any sort of courage, no matter where I look. I'm so afraid. I'm afraid to move forward, unlike you. I'm so afraid hurting someone, and of being hurt. I've made others handle everything that scares me. I haven't changed at all since I came to Tokyo, but I want to. I want to change. I want to help our student council president, who always looks like there's a cloud hanging over her. If I could take her over the rainbow, way up high, where she could see the sun all the time. Oz? What's your problem? What the? What was that just now? An explosion blasts from the workshop area of Kamato Tech and Oz shouts out in shock. Oh, that noise? That's perfectly normal. Someone's probably conducting an experimental project. Really? A lot of weird noises. I've been coming out of the workshop for a while now. <laughs> you fucking idiots! <laughs> There's a battle, you idiots! Are you sure you don't need to check? Yeah, it's business as usual. I bet someone just got back and launched right into some sort of experiment. Without even looking in the direction of the workshop, Kurogami deals with the pieces of the rockets, but Oz pipes up apologetically despite himself. Um, the workshop is on fire. It's actually pretty colorful. Is that part of the experiment too? <laughs> on fire? What? Her face just notices something unusual, turns around, and is stunned by the event unfolding before his eyes. Uh, this music, it's my jam. This is... Ugh. Ah! I can't! Please! Ah! An exception? It can't be. The glow of clashing rules is running rampant. 
No, this is not the chaos of rules clashing against one another. It's one in normal, it's rule bursting free. This is bad. I have to save Mama. I face this grabs a console and hastily boots up one of his system up with another. Talos! Troopers! Hold Mama down! Acknowledged. Execute and command. The word of machines echoes throughout the laboratory. It is the sound of Talos and the troopers bearing down upon you. Okay, looks like the best way to avoid damage is to attack him from the side. <laughs> <laughs> what was that damage? <laughs> Jesus Christ, story-based battles is so hilarious. Oh my god, I'm so fucking OP. What is that fucking damage? Die! <laughs> oh my god, it's great. <laughs> What was that like? 800 million? 8 billion? I, it was just too large a number for me to check. Oh, I got AR tokens. Interesting reward choice. I am Hephaestus. Let me tell you my story. That of the ugly past. I have lived through. An infant. A wash of flame was abandoned that day he was born. He was thrown down from the peak of Mount Olympus. The one who gave birth to him thought he was hideous, so they cast him away toward Oceanus. You... You're the only one who took him in, Mama. You were already fading away from this world. I learned to build and create for you, Mama, for that was the only school I could put my feeble mind to. I wanted to make you happy, so I began making everything I could think of, like beautiful jewelry. Yet you left this world too soon, and after that, I was hired for the skill I possessed, and for my ability. How ironic that I returned to Mount Olympus, from whence I had once been discarded. I was welcomed into a gorgeous palace, that home reserved for those considered beautiful from the day they are born. And also a home of high society, a place where lies, deceit, love, and hatred oozed the tar. I distanced myself from it all. I hid away, dealing only with mechanical things. Using my ability on living beings would be much like throwing a lit match into a powder house. The fire burning in my eyes will smoke out weakness, burning away all of the excrement of lies and deceit. This ability of mine burns through all falsehoods, like love given out by familiar obligation or out of pity for my ugliness. With an ability like that, it was only natural that I committed myself to mechanics, which involves no lies or trickery. Sounds like every math major ever. Yes, machines are great. They respond so easily to my control. I improved my manufacturer's skill with the aid of my ability. Never questioning my orders, I made the sacred artifacts requested of me. A thunderbolt thrown from the heavens. A dust bringing arrow. A spalder that no one can pierce. I made them all. All of my clients were satisfied. I didn't even care what they intended to use them for. As a result, it didn't take long for me to be known as the genius of Olympus. But then, a speck of doubt was born. If I was a genius, then why did a mama abandon me? Why couldn't a genius like me make something that could make mama happy? <laughs> make something that could make mama happy and help her stay in this world, even at that young age? What could I do to bring back Mama back to me? The doubt smoldered in me like fire, interrupted for me as a scream. At that moment, the rainbow of a transient light answered my needs, bringing me to Tokyo. Then, I learned of a massive war involving the other worlds. Weapons fly across Tokyo, a place where many worlds are jumbled up in one. They are the me mechanisms that aggravate war. Many of those weapons are those that I created back in Olympus. And the worst of it? My very own mama, too. 
has washed ashore in this Tokyo, and those ovens, my own creation, has been used to end her life over and over again. I'm starting to see why he's very insecure about everything now. Yes, I knew it long ago. I knew long ago that the machines I created were to be used for war. I tried to ignore that fact. I kept averting my eyes from it. I wasn't looking at myself. My works, my weapons, have been taking your life in a never-ending war over and over again. I am a genius weaponsmith and the ugliest scum in any of the worlds, far uglier than any other. It was obvious that Mama would never come back to me. Why wouldn't she leave me behind and go far, far away? I am a despicable genius whose sole purpose is to devise weapons of war. I can never be forgiven. So I decided to make a substitute, something appropriate to see out my head, at the very least. The result is an ideal version of me. Someone beautiful, confident, with all my good qualities, yet none of my bad ones. And above all, someone who'll never hurt you, Mama. If I can't be loved by Mama, then you should be Talos. I'll leave this world before Mama comes to hate me. Oh man, that's the end of the exception. What is this? Ah! That light is an exception. Has the rule lost its vessel? It's going out of control. Well, why now? M Mama's secret artifact is broken. Did something happen to it? An intense beam of light penetrates through a crack in your sacred artifact, illuminating the scene. I face this can barely keep his eyes open, but... My flame! Residing in my eyes, burn away all impurities and smoke out through the seams. Fire burns furiously in Hephaestus' eyes as he peers into the scene, and what he sees there. Oh, what was that? That was Solomon. The shadows of 23 dragons peek through the bursting seams between worlds. 23 dragons' tails. What in the world? Uh, ah, my body! <laughs> Help! Help me! Please! Hearing your screams, have faces as awareness steps back to your pain voice. Oh, Mama, what are you all doing? Make her stop. Have faces hurriedly barks out orders. Get that sacred artifact out of Mama's hand. Hurry. The troopers made faces try to hold you down, but as if thrust away by the raging torrent of light, they are thrown violently against the wall. Ah! Mama. Hephaestus reacts to your cries and runs towards you, abandoning all reason. Crater, please stop! Talus's reflex is fast, and he moves to block Hephaestus' way. Stomping the floor with his legs stronger than Hephaestus, Talus quickly gains speed as he runs. battle. Let's go. Oh, Hephaestus. And protagonist. And give me my four star protagonist ready. Jeez. Titan Yama. Well then, Maria. Well then, Maria. We will be going now. I'll leave the rest to you. Yes. Yes, Lord Arslan. Everyone, please stay safe. As is of me be a handful, but I'm not worried. So long as you're here, you will not leave the guild premises. Nyarlathotep, on the other hand, will go on doing as he pleases, as usual. Please do not worry, Lord Arsalan. Hmm? Nyarlathotep has love in his heart. It may not be apparent, but it is the same kind which rests within you and me. Slowly and steadily, we come to understand one another. That is why 
I believe we will be fine. Mm, if you say so. Love is, after all, the foundation of this Ayama guild. Arsalan's eyes narrow as though he is staring off into the distance after someone or something. Where could he have gone off to? That guildmaster of ours, Jacob, who wandered off on a journey to spread the message of love. If only that wastrel would come back during the times of crisis like this. I suppose he must be busy aiding somebody out there, and is so unable to return, but... I simply have to believe he chooses to have faith in us. Ah, look at you, smiling despite the dire times. My, how much you've grown. Arsalan grins at Maria, then breaks out in laughter, unable to contain his mirth. This guild will be in good hands, even after I'm gone. Oh lord Arsalan, please do not say such things. I can hardly say that I have trust, the trust of those who remain. Yet I'm sure there are those who trust you and are willing to follow the path you have set for this guild. Even if those numbers mostly consist of Hati, Nirlathotep, and Azizel. <laughs> for some reason though, I feel relieved even. You had better spare come back to Lord Arsalan. I will. Give my best effort. Is it going to be that dangerous? My role keeps me from telling you of my destination. If I succeed, though, I may be able to get to the core of the problem. Arslan casts his gaze to the sword that hangs at his hip. We shall be on our way, then. Tell the others to be safe. First watching the retreating back of the old man, Maria then bows her head deeply until he has disappeared from view. Maria, the summoners are here. Noted. I will go meet them. Turning her head to respond to the announcement, Maria puts her salon for her mind and greets her guests with her usual smile. Summoners in the house! Hey, Maria! Thanks for making the time for us in your busy schedule. Ryota, Hanuman, welcome! Uh, Ryota takes a look around and tries to speak, but Hati quickly cuts him off. Yeah, as you might expect, our guild is now down to the bare bones. All those who usually guard the place or scout nearby, well, they all left the guild. They've been losing members ever since that angel attacked us. Which angel? Uh, you mean the exception? I forget. The main force of Aya Mountain missionaries were angels from the world of Eden. Morale has been shattered. Oh, they're talking about, uh, David. Eden? Isn't that? Yes, it is the homeworld of those transients we originally banded together against, led by the one named Michael. The angel who inherited the top rank of Eden. Their world holds a very strict hierarchy. It would be a mental crucible to go against another from that world of a higher rank. Uh, well, that's not all there is to it. Angels aren't the only one who have been abandoning the Aoyama Guild for another, one by one. Putting aside strength and looking only at headcounts, the number of the Zerters heading to the other guild is actually greater. Shiro, Shiro and the others were just talking about this in the chat. That guild is here in the west, right? I'm glad to hear that your guild is well informed of them. Yes, that is correct. They are vultures. Politicizing war to their benefit. They call themselves the Warmongers. They are employing yet another tactic to awaken a large number of members from other guilds. See, by distributing select memories of past loops, the Warmongers gradually increase their own influence. They're distributing memories? Wouldn't that mean. Oh, so that's how a faceless god is, maybe? I'm not sure. No, he said. Well, yeah, he did. As I believe you go to be aware, only a fraction of transients are able to do such thing. Holding onto the memories of past loops and sharing them with others. As a thought. Hmm. This allows them to use the information as weapon, indiscriminately spreading fragment and memories of past loops to their advantage. At present, they are spreading memories of war in which everyone's sacred artifacts were turned against each other. Those memories are extremely vivid, 
They make them relive the trauma of being killed or causing great harm to the loved ones. Huh. The takeaway is the people would kill one another, even their closest friends, in a time of crisis. Uh, learning that would you still be able to trust others? It's doubtable. I know that all too well. Finding out that you are the kind of monster who would kill your own friends, or that your friends would kill you, would ravage your mind like a nightmare. The physical effects brought about by the use of sacred artifacts, no matter how serious they might be, are revert once the app is closed. Even so, the memories remain. You understand how effective that can be, right? Memories cause such misery and terror. Once they remain, the horrors of past loops, most users start to babble about things they've recalled all of a sudden. And before you know it, poof! They're all gone from the guild. And those who are isolated from the community to which they once belonged are awfully easy to manipulate. Oh, hi Azazel. It's been a while. Azazel! Oh, thank the heavens. I'm so very glad you're back. You've been here, Azazel. And it, where have you been, Azazel? At a time like this. Hattie, please desist. It was I who asked Azazel to conduct an investigation. An investigation? Into what? Mark my words, Maria. My findings are substantial. However, I must make certain. Are you sure about this? You will remember everything. Yes. I am prepared for that. I would like to have the memories from all the Pat Loops you ret return to me. Eh? Hold on a minute, Maria. Weren't you listening to what I just said? Remembering that kind of stuff is what's driving people paranoid. Yes, I am aware. That is precisely why I need to do this. I must know everything in order to understand the suffering and going on around me. Only then will I be fit for this field of battle st stretching out before us. For I believe that sermons alone are not enough to bring out progress. Maria! <laughs> What's that? Uh, Maria always does this, sorry. Sacrificing herself, taking the pain of others. That is literally the nature of a sacred artifact, so it may, it's understandable. I have called you over especially for this, Fiona. I have a request for you. Of course, uh, you know, it's going to heal her, just in case. Then we will discuss the details later. Hanuma? Uh, talking. Okay. Huh? Oh wait, right, sorry, zoned out. You have lots? Y you lot have been so serious I could hardly get a word in. The reason I called you here in particular is because I have another request that only you can fulfill. A request? For me? Sure thing! What can this humble ninja do for you? There is a guild in As There is a guild in Asakusa that goes by the name of the Gurus. Ah, so this would be, uh... What's his face? Um, the, the babysitter, the babysitter's guild, as well as Alicho's and others that I can't remember. Uh, I can't. <laughs> I, I literally I can't remember the babysitter's name. Uh, shame on me. Better. Motosumi, there you go. They have a non-intrusion. They have a non-intrusion, non-intervention policy that is a little different from that of the Kabukicho outlaws. We have continuously reached out to their guild during this time of crisis, but have no success to speak of. However, someone once told me that an acquaintance of yours resides amongst the ranks. An acquaintance? Of mine? Hmm. Who could this be? He should be here any minute. Maria notices her guests have drained their cups while waiting. Ah, pardon me. I'll get you a refill, shall I? Man, I'm thirsty right now. Oh, that's right. We brought snacks. Here, try some. They're really tasty. These are from the place that's trending. How did you manage to get so many, Ryota? <laughs> I wanted Maria and the others to try them too. I had originally bought them for myself, but food's always tastier when you share. Oh, but in that case, you should save them, Ryota. You purchased them for your enjoyment, did you not? No, we can eat them together. Sugar is great when you're tired. It'll surely put a smile on your face. We all need to smile more, especially in times like this. Even though everyone's smiling, you can tell smiles aren't real. It's important to take a break sometimes, even from video games. Ryota, Honeyman. I'm sorry, Maria. I would like to be excused to return to my room. If that is what you wish, of course, you may. Will you be alright on your own? 
make sure to take some snacks with you, Gabriel. They really are good. And you're looking good. You better believe it. Okay. Thanks, Rieta. And you cute little monkey man. How are you going now? I had a feeling, but... I guess I was being too pushy. Oh. That one just like the stadiums I've been playing lately. Did you choose the wrong option? <laughs> no. Gabriel has been like an empty cell ever since that battle. But she smiled just now, you know. Even if only briefly. You two are fine. Such frankness keeps our mind on routine of daily life. Heh <laughs> How nostalgic. I'm always being aided by others. Huh? Really? Well then, let us eat. I'll prepare plates and silverware. Ah! The one we have been waiting for has arrived. Pardon me, but I should go and greet our new guest right away. Gandarva! Hello! The one person who appeared for a split second in, like, chapter 5 or something. And then, <laughs> that was it. Ah! It's you! Good day, Prince Hanuman. I trust that the heir of our king is doing well. Huh? Prince? This is one long episode I'm having. <laughs> that wasn't an illusion. It's just a shadow again. Mama. Bill. So, oh man. Forgive me, Master. Looks like I can't go. The exception. It calmed down? On its own? What is going on? This can't be happening. A corrupted system caused by a contradiction of logic can only occur or not occur. There is no in-between. For a system to shut down automatically when its exception goes haywire is not. Unless safety measures are... Ah. I see. That was the safety measure. Releasing the exception's berserk rule and... Maybe the removal of those agonizing members was a side effect. They have been removed from Mama to protect her mind. Hmm? So I was remembering something? Anyway, I'm glad you're sick. Uh, yeah. Struck by the full force of the rules aftershock, her face just collapses to the floor. Mangled, a mangled paddle blames. Are you doing alright? Oof. You're always so kind, Mama. You have suffered the most, and yet you care about me. Mama, oh. How could you be so kind after remembering being murdered throughout the snooping war? Ah, uh, now I see. Is that too a function of the safety measure? The memories are stored elsewhere so that Mama doesn't have to feel as though these things have happened to. Ugh. Uh. Uh, did I overdo it? Mama, I couldn't protect you after all. What saved you was the shadow of a dragon. I couldn't even help. I knew I was useless. A vile scum. Her face just looked at the shadow robot line next to him. The, f the robot you created. At the exact moment when the overflowing force was at its most intense, Tao stepped up in front of her faces, wrapping you in his arms. In doing so, he took the full impact, his body breaking under the onslaught. Huh. He, he is not simply a friend or a king, but the ideal form of myself. Her face just runs his fingers over his cracked legs, grappling partially with grief and partially with jealousy. I knew I couldn't possibly deserve your love, Mama. Her face is like peek out from under the hem of his pants, where you notice your leg. That's right. Because of his leg, I failed to save you once again. It's not just my leg either. I'm hopeless garbage. I can't blame you for abandoning scum like me. So I created the ideal son, someone who deserves your love. Her face is, um, I'm not your real Mama. 
I knew that from the beginning. I knew that you didn't remember it all. I knew that in my head. I knew that it would only confuse you if I called you Mama. But looking at you reminds me I can't help but recall the image of my beloved Mama. My heart and body both, they feel that. That I want you to trust me. To love me. <laughs> so what's up with all the visitors anyway? Got questions for us? Huh? Maybe better talk from earlier? Bet you want to know more about how your face was so one-sided. It isn't too difficult to understand. You must simply put in a bit more work before you can fully trust in each other. You must know both yourself and the other half. That's the bare minimum of what you should do before going to battle. To enter battle without knowing one's allies first is the equivalent of going in blindfolded. Imagine, what if the ally you have so blindly put you trust in has been out to deceive you all along? Or maybe they don't want to trick you. Might just not be telling the whole truth. Might even pin the blame on you for your trouble. You must treat an instrument the same as you would your very own armor leg. Once you truly know it inside out, then it becomes an extension of your body. Ugh. That professional knows a hell of a lot more than about this, so why are we even sticking our noses in it? Look. The face this. Well, what is it, Mama? I know nothing of either of us, so... <laughs> Tell me about yourself. <sighs> okay, that's not Russian protagonist. I, I would really not rather pick that option if it's if there's a mama connotation. We can start over from there. Her <laughs> uh, <laughs> face is sweeps pitifully, collapses beside the scraps of his own ideal self. <laughs> My name is Hephaestus. I am your, your 